putting Europe back on track is the theme of the European Business Summit. What do you, as representative of AmCham and as AT&T executive, believe needs to be done in Europe to restore the economy here? Well, I think one of the first uh, priorities for us is around innovation. We believe that innovation will be critical in restoring um, the economy. And one example I'd like to quote from uh, our industry is, for instance, the success and the growth we have seen in the use of iPhones and broadband mobile networks. Um, it's hard to believe that AT&T was actually the first to launch the iPhone in the U.S. just three years ago. That just happened three years ago. And in the meantime, if you see what has happened in terms of the adoption of the smartphones and similar devices has been incredible. Today, in the planet, there are about 600 million users using global mobile broadband. Uh, we will see that the use of smartphones and tablets is overtaking uh, the use of PCs. And in our network, for instance, over the past three years, we have seen that the um, use of wireless data has increased with not less than 5,000%. So the point I want to make is that when you come up with an innovative product like, uh, like a smartphone supported by strong broadband uh, networks that can transform industry even in the heat of a big economic crisis that we have seen. It has not only transformed our industry, but it has supported many other industries. And this is just the beginning. If you think about what will happen around emerging devices connected to wireless networks, there is an estimate out there that this will be a market of about $90 billion uh, by 2013. So a huge opportunity based on innovation. AT&T clearly is market leader in the United States. In Europe, what is your strategy? Uh, we are actually a global company. We are indeed very strong in the US, but we are offering services uh, to companies globally. Um, I would say we are perhaps a little bit less known to the consumer basis outside the U.S. because our primary business is uh, business to business. So we offer global corporations with global network and telecom solutions, which has really enabled them to, to be more pro productive in a global world. AT&T is very big in terms of the iPhone strategy in the U.S. In Europe, are you looking for partners to achieve a similar market penetration? Well, again, our, um, our focus outside the U.S. is business to business. So we focus on large global multinationals who we offer complete uh, network solutions. And that is not just um, wireline solution. It goes to wireless solutions, integrating wireless solutions for companies uh, globally. It goes in areas like cloud computing, security services. So we try to address the full needs and the full portfolio for global multinational companies. And we're very successful at it. We have seen our market growing outside the U.S., even in the economic uh, downturn. We've seen strong growth in all our regions, including in um, Europe and the Middle East. Uh, and we continue to invest. Last year, again, in global, uh, AT&T invested about $1 billion, and we're going to do this again this year. What role does AT&T see for bodies like the European Union, the European Commission, when it comes to encouraging innovation in mobile technology? Well, we are actively participating in dialogue with the EU and, and, and um, with, with other institutions. Uh, for us, Europe is an important uh, market. It's, uh, it represents a growth opportunity. Our key message, basically, to the European Union is that there is probably an untapped opportunity in terms of delivery of services. If you think about the services industry, like the telecoms industry, uh, there are about 70% of our economy, of the European economy, which constitutes of services, whilst only 30% um, are cross-border services. So our industry is per definition cross-border. We deliver global solutions to global companies, uh, and we see a couple of impediments and, and barriers to, um, to really deliver these services in the European market. As an example, uh, we need to comply with the regulations of 27 different national regulatory authorities still, whereas the service is exactly identical to meet identical needs for uh, global clients. So I think there's our message to the um, institutions is there is huge upside if we can really take these barriers away and talk about a single integrated market. So basically helping release the potential of the European market as well. Absolutely. Mr. Bennett, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.